Hey everybody, I want to clarify a couple of things. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is tension. So I've got a block on top of my 2x4 and I'm holding a string attached to the block. And when I pull that block with the string, notice the string is not parallel to the 2x4. It could be, could be, there's no problem there. But it doesn't have to be. So in this case, it's up and to the right. And so I would draw my force vector for that particular case up and to the right if I was doing that force vector for this block. And I'm actually gonna do a different one here in a minute. Um, so keep that in mind. It's always along the direction of the stream, okay? Um, and then we'll talk about tensions here in a second. But there's my force vector due to a tension, all right? Uh, and I should say due to a tension. There's a tension force acting on that, this block. But now, if I take a hard, uh, uh, like a, a, a hard member here, and I push the block, I'm going to call that a tension. It's a compression, so it's a negative tension, if you will. It's just in the, it's it, it's down into the left in this case. But there is a tension pushing the block, and again, it's down into the left. It's going to be along the direction of this beam, if you will, or this post. All right, and so that's gonna push that. Now, let's get into something a little different. I really wanna get into this because there's a lot of things going on here that are important. So now I've got the block on the left and then the blue block on the right, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a tension, a compression, on the left, excuse me, on the right-hand block, and then the blue block on the left is also being pushed. So what's pushing the blue block, right? What's pushing the blue block? Granted, we're in static equilibrium is what we want, but I'm gonna go show, show some motion just to go, so you can see that there is a force acting on this blue block, but what's, what's pushing it? Your normal tendency is to say, I'm pushing the block, but we're gonna find out that's indirectly true, but directly not the case. Okay, so let's take a look. So let's look at the forces acting on the right-hand block, the one with the hook on it. So there's a force of compression down and to the left, and as a compression, I'm still going to refer to it as a tension. So there's a tension due to the post, right, that aluminum post that I had, acting on uh, the right block. There's a normal force that's due to the two by four. Acting on the right block. There's gravity. due to the earth acting on the right block. Right, so these are all forces acting on the right block. So this is the force diagram for the right block. But then there's another force. And if I've got these two blocks pushing on each other, which we're gonna get into more detail later, the left block is pushing on the right block with a normal force. Okay, so there's another normal force, and it's gonna be in the right-hand direction. Um, and so I'm gonna call this F normal two, and that's a normal force due to the left block acting on the right block. Okay, and the blocks were sliding to the left, so there must be a frictional force to the right. And so there's a frictional force due to the two by four 
backing on the right block. So notice all of these forces are acting on the right hand block. There's the force diagram for the right hand block. Right? Then if I do a force diagram for the left hand block, there's going to be a gravitational force, Mg, due to the Earth acting on the left block. There's going to be another normal force, and we call this Fm3. That's a normal force due to the 2 by 4 acting on the left block. There's a frictional force. Again, it's sliding to the left, so the frictional force is going to be right. I'll label that F. Uh, I'm going to call that F2, and we'll call this one F1. Friction. Due to the 2 by 4 acting on the left block. Now, the post is not touching it. So the normal force or the tension due to the post acting on the right-hand block, the, that, that tension isn't here because the post is not touching the right-hand block. I don't care that it's pushing it indirectly. It isn't touching it. So I don't put it on this force diagram. What I do have is this normal force right here. Okay, so I'm going to have another normal force. I'm going to label it Fn2. I label it exactly the same because it is what we call the Newton's third law pair, equal and opposite forces. And so it is a normal force. And then the due to and the acting on, very important, we just switch these. So it's in the opposite direction, right, but equal in size. i make that arrow a little bit different. So it's due to the right block acting on the left block. Okay? That's a Newton's third law pair. All right, so these two, let's block them out in purple, are Newton's third law pairs. Equal and opposite forces. Right? They're equal and opposite forces. That's a Newton's third law pair. Now, very important, if I'm looking at this left-hand block and I examine the forces in the y direction, the normal force up and the gravitational force down are going to cancel out because when I look at the equation in the y direction, some of the forces in the y, I'm going to get Fn3 minus mg, I'm going to put a little L on there for left, is equal to zero. And so Fn3 equals mg. So these forces are equal and opposite, but they are not Newton's third law pairs. They just happen to be equal and opposite, but they are definitely not Newton's third law pairs. Because if I take the two by four away, gravity is still there. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Gravity hasn't gone anywhere, but this normal force is gone because I dropped away the two by four. I pulled it out and the, and the block is falling. Right, so they are not Newton's third law pairs. I, I can identify Newton's third law pairs by doing these definitions because they will be equal and opposite forces where the due to and the acting ons are reversed. The due to's and acting ons are reversed. That's a Newton's third law pair. Okay, so we've discussed, well, and let me even step back one more time. Uh, if I look at the sum of the forces in the y direction on this one, Fn, and mg are not the only y forces. So they're not equal and opposite. Yeah, the sum of the forces in the y are zero, but there's a component of this tension, there's a component of this tension that's in the y direction, right? Because if I break this down, it has a y component and an x component. And the component in the y direction plus mg are both down, so let me say minus the component in the y direction, minus mg are down, Fn is up. So this normal force in this example is not equal to the gravitational force. It's very common that the gravitational force and normal force are equal, but it doesn't always happen that way. It didn't happen on the incline. It doesn't happen in this situation. So be careful of that. Gravitational forces 
and normal forces are not equal and opposite. They are not Newton's third law pairs. Even when they are equal and opposite, they are not Newton's third law pairs. Okay, Newton's third law pairs require the do to and acting ons to be the same, but reversed. They're reversed. Okay? All right, so hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea about what I mean by touching, right? The post is touching the right hand block, but it isn't touching the left hand block. Indirectly, I am pushing the block, but directly, I'm not. There's no Paul in this force diagram because I'm not touching that right hand or that left hand block. Well, I'm not touching the right hand block either, right? So that's not there. Is there a force due to me acting on the post? Absolutely. But that's not part of our force diagrams, and so we don't worry about that. All right, so there's a little bit of work on defining forces and force diagrams. I think it's really critical because we're going to find out later on that there are forces that we think about. Like if I'm turning a corner, you're going to say, oh, there's a force acting on the car or on me due to turning the corner. That's not a thing. Turning the corner is not something I can touch. And so that's not a force acting on me as I go around the corner. There are forces there, absolutely. And we'll get to that in more detail in dynamics. But it's got to be a thing that I can touch. I can touch the Earth. I can touch the Moon. The gravitational forces are a thing. Well, I can't touch the Moon because it's too far away, but you get the idea. It's got to be an object, a thing, that you use for the due to. If there's not a thing there, the force doesn't exist. All right? Okay. Hopefully that'll help. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.